Hey everybody, welcome to the Glums channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Glums Into a Life of a Child YouTube channel. Today, we're back with another awesome Keeping It Real interview. We're so lucky to have so many special guests lined up to help us along our Project Us journey. We hope to empower you all to embrace your individuality and be your true authentic self while learning so much from each other's fabulous differences. Today's guest has been a big fan of the Glimpse team. She has been a great cheerleader and support for us since the beginning. Her book, Come With Me, helped us face some community struggles and continue moving forward by leading with our hearts. Then her book, Listen, Remind us to slow down and appreciate the world around us by listening with our hearts to everything the world has to offer us. During the pandemic, she added a story of hope to the world called What the World Can Make. Through a lens of friendship and mindfulness, this beautiful story reminds us to be aware and grateful for small things and tiny moments that are gifted each and every day. Anyway, are you ready to meet our guests? It's time to get this interview started. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Project Us Glimpse team is proud to present our friend, Holly McGee. Hello, Glimpse family. I'm Holly M. McGee, and I'm a writer, a literary agent, the mom of three kids, age 23, 20, and 17, and a pup named Dario, who's four, turning four years old. I am very excited to be included in this series, and I'm so looking forward to having a conversation. Hi, Holly. It's so nice of you to take the time to connect with the Glimpse team. We know how busy life can be, so for you to generously take time to work with a bunch of kids from Toronto is very kind of you. I'm so excited to be able to ask you a question. Glimpse kids always say that everybody is perfectly unique and magnificently awesome. What is one quality that you love about yourself and why? That's a pretty hard question. What's one quality I love about myself and why? I don't find it easy to talk to thing, talk about things I love for myself, but I do, I'm working hard on that and I do love my accountability. I always show up, whether it's for a friend, whether it's for a celebration, whether it's for someone who needs to talk to me. I think it's calling someone back, responding quickly. I think it's really important in life and has been a measure of my professional success for sure. And being accountable to the page as a writer as well. Um, the one aspect of my accountability I think I'm most proud of is an exercise routine I do every day. I plank, I'm a planker. It's a way to build your core, to feel balanced and whole, to have a rudder to each day. So every single day before I go to bed, I do nine minutes of planks. And on November 14th, 2023, I'll be celebrating nine years of planking every day. At the moment, I have a couple of friends who do it with me. We have a group text and planking keeps me balanced. It keeps my body very strong. And it's something I know that I'll do every day before bed. And so I highly recommend finding, it doesn't <laughs> obviously have to be planking, finding something in your life that you do every day, you make a routine of, and it will be sort of um, carry you through the great times, the hard times, all the times, and you know you can count on yourself to do it every day. So that's my answer. Hi Holly, the Glimpse Kids are exploring the many different things that make us who we are. We know that every new experience, every new person we meet, every mistake we make, every goal we reach has an impact on the person we are becoming. 
We are all a work in progress, always moving forward and learning along the way. The kid I was back in kindergarten is different from who I am today. And who I am today is surely different from the teen or adult I will become one day. If you could choose to chat with a younger version of yourself or an older version of yourself, who would you choose and what would you talk about? I'm looking at myself in high school right now. And 9, 10, 11th grade were so hard for me. And I want to say, you are so beautiful and brilliant. And why didn't you go to mathletics? Why were you so embarrassed that you were smart? You should have been proud. Let's talk about that. You weren't comfortable shining. And, you know, you're gonna shine, girl. Because being authentic, being exactly who you are, it's the path to freedom and it's the path to luminosity. And don't we all wanna be luminous? Of course, in our own ways. Hello, Holly. Thanks for hanging out with us for this interview. We appreciate the opportunity for us to learn together. Our final question is for you about taking risks trying new things, and learning from failures. Can you think of a time when you took a risk and failed? What did you learn from that experience and how did it make you a better you? My failures and what I've learned from them, I could talk about this for an hour, but I'll go back to when I was 17 in high school, I was awarded a scholarship from AFS, which was an organization built to promote peace throughout the world and understanding of different cultures in different countries. And I was sent to Sri Lanka, which is a teardrop shaped island at the southern tip of India. And I arrived, there weren't even cell phones back then. And after getting familiar with the, my family and the culture, I was brought to a recital where I was put on stage and asked to sing the American National Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Not only do I have a not so hot singing voice, but I couldn't remember the words either. And it was a pretty big failure. Maybe I got out, oh say can you see, and that's about it. And later that month, I was put into a tennis tournament in Sri Lanka. Um, based on my height and how strong I am, they assumed I could play a great game of tennis and I had never played in my life. I was outmatched, I was embarrassed, and yeah, it wasn't pretty. But what I learned from that is, okay, let's never make assumptions about people's talents or what they can do or what they know based on what they look like or where they're from. And number two, let's always forgive because my fam my host family, they were so kind to me. They weren't embarrassed that I was so bad at the singing or the tennis. They loved me just as much. And so two important lessons for life, don't assume anything and always forgive and we'll all be happy. Hello, Holly. My name is Ola. This is the best part of our interviews. It is now time for you to flip the Keeping It Real interview script. It's time for you to ask me a question. Ask me anything you want. Go ahead, ask away. I'm so happy that it's my turn to ask a question. And this is for Ola. And as context, I was thinking about my childhood and how I often felt really lonely and I invented a friend, an imaginary friend, who kept me company and was by my side every day at nursery school. And his name was Guy Hose. He wore long gray socks and he did all the naughty things I wasn't allowed to do. So when my parents went for a teacher conference, they came home and said that my teacher said Guy Hose didn't exist. And I said with utmost confidence that he did. And because he did, and he kept me company in the loneliest of times, we all need companionship. And for me, the companionship was with my friend Guy Hose. And he ended up in my novel, Matilda Bright and Tender, and he's with me to this day. 
And so I wondered, Ola, if you have an imaginary friend, and if so, who are they? And what are their traits? And if you don't have one, and you could have one, and you could invent one, what traits would they have? What personality traits would they have that would support you in your life and keep you company in all the times, the sad times, the happy times, the regular times? I would love to know about them because I think it's so important that we all have our imaginations and our imaginary friends or imaginary symbols to keep us company through our lives. It's a safety net that we can always fall back on. And I can't wait to hear your answer. Bye. Hi, Holly. Thanks for the very interesting question. Guy Ho seems like a really special friend to you. It's interesting that he was a naughty one. I wonder if he ever got you into trouble or did you help him keep out of trouble? Anyway, I don't really have an imaginary friend, but sometimes I do pretend that there's just somebody else playing cards with me. I just play for them. If I could invent a friend just for me, it wouldn't matter if it was a boy or a girl, but my friend would have to be funny to entertain me when I'm bored. My friend would be a good listener when I need to talk about something. We could share secrets with each other and trust each other. I guess these are the things I think are important in all people. Real life friends, not just in your imagination. I like what you said about imagination being important to keep you well. I like to draw and write stories. Sometimes the imaginary stuff that I create is really how I wish things would be for me. For example, I used to have pet fish, but they died. So now I often draw or write about puppies, kittens, and bunnies because I wish I had one to keep me company and to show love to. Thanks, Holly. It was fun chatting with you. This has been an awesome Keeping It Real interview. Holly, you have given us and our viewers something to think about, reflect upon, and grow from. Thanks for adding your light to the Project Us journey, and thanks for being such a great friend to us. Thank you, Glimpse Kids, for talking to me today. I had so much fun. I love your questions. And if you ever find yourselves in the Big Apple, New York City, please let me know and I will shower you with some book love from my library of books in our conference room at the office. Oh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye. We'll be back real soon with another Keeping It Real interview. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching, everybody. And remember, you can change the world by keeping it real. Be who you want to be. Be who you are. Lead with your heart and you will go far. Have a nice day, everyone. There is joy. There is This has been a Glimpse production. Thank you for watching.